Hello everyone. Uh, the road is, has been doing wonderful things. Uh, very famous calligrapher. He made this and sent to us. Uh, we thought that we should uh, give him some some express about thanks to him, so we sent some uh, something, but he said, no, 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 we just gave it to you. I gave it to you for your uh, Jesus Culture Fest. Yeah. So, uh, that's amazing. So, uh, we thank God that the Lord is doing wonderful things. Then we have another very good news from our uh, Professor Hejun Kim, one of our uh, co-workers in Korea. Uh, she and uh, some dozen uh, these uh, people of God went to France and uh, they had this uh, in European countries some uh, uh, testimonials, singing, playing and she sent us some many pictures uh, so it's amazing how God is preparing our way for next year's Eastern European some healing uh, concert and uh, uh, mission convention and uh, that's really amazing uh, and then uh, Oh, our Vakapala Flint Church is being constructed well. Pastor Manuel sent us a picture of their church, very nice. I mean, it's very, very, uh, uh, really uh, wonderful. Yeah, not fancy, but really wonderful. People of God working very hard. So we are grateful to God, and uh, I've been invited to for an interview in Christian Broadcasting Company, and uh, I talked about you know uh, our Jesus Culture Ministry and uh, 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 the, our award. I, I received the word as poetry, poet, and we are we pray to open. Uh, Poetry school, poetry gallery. Uh, we are praying for writing the third Christian epic. And uh, this uh, Christian Broadcasting Company director uh, sent him a uh, cacao message and said, please come uh, February 14th for interview. Uh, so uh, it's very encouraging. The Lord is doing mighty works all over the world and Pastor uh, Emerson of Bangladesh has a wonderful new granddaughter we are very wonderful and Pastor uh, Nicholas is visiting uh, Lagos, Nigeria to attend some African leaders convention so I encourage him and uh, please pray that in three or four years uh, we may have a, a sustainable revival convention, mission convention uh, in Kenya. <laughs> so I really believe that will happen. I, I'm just amazed. We just begin to... Oh, there's another good thing. This uh, Some people in Korea says, come this summer, we'll, we'll have a... Uh, so many have been inviting me. So, God is opening the door uh, for us to really have some uh, wonderful missionary meeting, mission meeting. Okay, how about we sing one song, 10,000 reasons bless the Lord. We'll just sing, uh, we'll just sing this uh, in the page four, we'll just sing two verses with chorus. <clears throat> it's a simple melody, so please just sing with me. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul, 
Worship his holy name. Sing like never before, O oh my soul, and worship your holy name. The sun comes up, it's a new day dawning. It's time to sing your song again. Whatever may pass and whatever lies before me, let me be singing when the evening comes. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, Oh, my soul, I worship your holy name. You are rich in love and you are slow to win. Your name is great and your heart is kind. For all your goodness I'll keep on singing. Ten thousand reasons for my heart to find. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, O oh my soul, I'll worship Your holy name. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we are so grateful to you. You yourself is doing wonderful things in us, among us, and all over the world. We are so grateful to you. We have 10,000 reasons to sing your praise. We bless your name, O oh Lord. Please be with us today so that we may worship you in spirit and in truth. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, this time our national treasure generation leaders will read the Word of God from 1 Peter chapter 1. First Peter chapter 1 verse 3 and 4 in English. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into the inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. This inheritance is kept in heaven for you. Amen. Amen. Wers 5 in Polish. Którzy mocą Bożą strzeżeni i bywacie przez wiarę w uzbawieniu, które zgotowane jest, aby było objawione czasu ostatecznego. Amen. Amen. Please join me in reading verse 5 and 6 who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. In all this greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. In Korean, 하나님께서는 여러분의 믿음을 보시고 그의 능력으로 여러분을 보호해 주시며 마지막 때 나타나기로 되어 있는 구원을 얻게 해 주십니다. 
그러므로 여러분이 지금 잠시 동안 여러 가지 시련 속에서 어쩔 수 없이 슬픔을 당하게 비웠다 할지라도 기뻐하십시오. Amen. We thank God who gave us new birth into living hope through Jesus' resurrection and also who gives us eternal inheritance in heaven. Okay, let us sing him 51. If you are able, please rise. We we'll sing 51. We will glorify. Psalm 51 reading. Salter, anyway, uh, Mission Joseph Ku will lead us in reading this wonderful psalm. Psalm 51, verses 1 to 17. Let's read it together. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. According to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you alone, have I sinned, and done what is evil in your sight so that you are justified in your sentence, and blameless when you pass judgment. Indeed, I was born guilty, a sinner, when my mother conceived me. You desire truth in the inward being. Therefore, teach me wisdom in your sacred heart. Purge me with hyssop, and I will be clean. Wash me, and I shall be white than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and sustain in me a willing spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways, and sinners will return to you. Deliver me from bloodshed, O God, O God of my salvation, and my tongue will sing aloud of your deliverance. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. For you have no delight in sacrifice, 
If I was to give burnt offerings, you would not be pleased. The sacrifice acceptable to God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. O God, you will not despise. Amen. We thank God who does not despise uh, our broken and contrite heart. May we approach Him with a broken and contrite heart. Please join me in invocation. In you, great God, the twisted things are straightened, the crippled are enlivened and made whole. Blind folks see, and the dead arise in resurrection. In you alone shall everyone know the time of our rejoicing. And so to you be our praise, our cries of gladness, today and forever, through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Yes, indeed we say, to you, O God, be our praise, our cries of gladness today and forever. Amen. Okay. Today's word of God is from John chapter 3. From today, yeah, next uh, two weeks, we'll a uh, study about Jesus' teaching on new birth. And today, John chapter 3, 1 through 8, Mary will lead us in reading this. Today's passage is John 3, 1 through 8. Now there was a Pharisee, a man named Nicodemus, who was a member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one could perform the signs you are doing if God were not with him. Jesus replied, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. How can someone be born when they are old? Nicodemus asked. Surely they cannot enter a second time into their mother's womb to be born. Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and the Spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the Spirit gives birth to Spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying, you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We thank God for his wonderful words, words of life. Let us sing him 525, wonderful words of life. Thank you. 
Today we will not cover the whole chapter, we will only cover chapter 3, verse 1 through 8. And uh, so I know you like to uh, mention everything about being born again, but today we will just put the first third. Bible says, Nicodemus came to Jesus at night while Jesus was staying in Jerusalem. I mean, Jesus attended, uh, Jesus cleared the temple. And then stayed over, Passover, and Jesus did many miracles. He healed people. He drove out evil spirit from people. He did many, many wonderful things. And Nicodemus came to Jesus at night. John writes about Nicodemus. He was one of Pharisees. Pharisees were really religious leaders in Jewish society. Pharisees memorized, learned by heart the first five books of the Bible. Genesis Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy from their age three. So uh, uh, it's a really, really wonderful. They were dedicated Bible scholars and uh, uh, really expert in the law. They knew the law of Moses so well in local synagogue they had power over there. There was 6,000 Pharisees in the nation. Just 6,000 among millions of people. The word Pharisee means separated. They separated <coughs> themselves from secular world, secular culture. They were very, very dedicated people in a sense. And 
Nicodemus also was one of member of ruling council called Sanhedrin. Sanhedrin was the top institution among Jewish people. Sanhedrin, I mean, ruled over Jewish people in civic matters, in military matters, international matters, Roman governor did. Roman also in executing a person, only, only Roman governor could do. But Sanhedrin sentenced a Jewish person to death. Only Sanhedrin could do. So Sanhedrin can be roughly what, like a Congress or plus Supreme Court, was something very, very powerful. Only there were only 70 elders in Sanhedrin. High priest, chief priest, this many Pharisees. So Nicodemus was also a national teacher. He was well versed in the Bible. In, when people had a religious matter or question or dispute, he worked with other leaders and resolved those things. So he looked at that, and he was a very, very top, one of the top people. But he knew that religious leaders of their time were opposed to Jesus because Jesus challenged them and cleared the temple. And uh, these leaders didn't like Jesus. They wanted to really, really oppose him. That's why Nicodemus came to Jesus at night. In full daylight, he couldn't come. If you come, people would know. Senate members would know immediately. So he came to Jesus at night. Why did he come to Jesus? He was just nationally prominent person and uh, humanly speaking Jesus was a very unknown or newcomer from countryside. He was like a new unknown kind of a country preacher. But of course many people knew John the Baptist testified about Jesus. But why would Nicodemus come to Jesus. He came to Jesus because he was shocked by Jesus. In Korean world, that's called Yesu Chungyok. When people really come to know Jesus, they are shocked. <laughs> because Nicodemus was first shocked by Jesus because Jesus is power. He was so powerful. He could challenge evil, high, strong evil in the temple. He could drive out demons. He could heal the sick. I mean, he could raise the dead. Jesus was so powerful. In comparison to Jesus, Nicodemus was very knowledgeable but powerless. Yeah. He kept all the laws, those things really well, kept the rules of society, those things. He knew very well how Roman world going on. But he didn't have spiritual power. Especially he didn't know the power of the Holy Spirit. Probably he didn't even know about the Holy Spirit well at all. But when he saw Jesus, Jesus was so different. He was different from anybody he knew. And he came to Jesus 
to learn to have that power. Jesus, I would like to have a power. Yes. Nowadays, there are many people who have form of religion, but without power. The martyr of 20th century, Bonhoeffer, great martyr of 20th century, Bonhoeffer said, talked about religiosity. Many people are very religious. They even call themselves Christians, but do not have a spiritual power. Do not know well about born again or do not know power of the Holy Spirit, many things. So that's why here Nicodemus really coming to Jesus is not surprising to us in a sense. Many people are like Nicodemus and they like to be like Nicodemus. Very religious, very successful, high, rank, high ranking. Yes. Nicodemus wanted to have power from Jesus. We remember when Apostle Paul was in an evangelical journey, he drove out demons and preached the gospel, healed the sick, very powerful. And then a sorcerer called Bar Jesus came to him and said, Sell me that power. <laughs> this sorcerer wanted to buy power from the power from Apostle Paul. Yeah. Hey, I could. I would like to heal the sick. I would like to drive with demons. I would like to have powerful preaching, power. And Paul really rebuked him very harshly. Yeah. Look at this, how many people come to Jesus to just get something they need, they like to have in the world. Some people come to Jesus Ah, to have a positive thinking. <laughs> Some people come to Jesus to be prosperous, to get rich, or to be you know, very, very, uh, to have a powerful connection with people, or many things. Many times it's like that. While we remain just unborn, spiritually unborn, we just like to have something from Jesus and meet our needs. But they miss very greatly our power, spiritual power, and our being born again are connected. When we are not born again, we cannot be really powerful. Yes, and uh, because power comes from the Spirit. Yeah, that's why the Bible says, not by your might, not by power, but by the Holy Spirit. Yeah. By the Spirit of God. Uh, Elijah could run from Mount Carmel to all the way to Samaria ahead of a King Ahab who was riding a chariot driven by horses. Yeah, by power. Yeah. <laughs> Look at Jesus. When did Jesus see Nicodemus? And when Nicodemus says, Rabbi, <laughs> this religious teacher, Nicodemus was a rabbi too, super rabbi. He called Jesus. He respected Jesus in some way, but he called Jesus Rabbi. Rabbi, I mean, the, you must have come from God because you have this power. Yeah. I want to get this power. Can you teach me how to get this power? Some skills. Many people think if they have some skills, from Jesus, they will be very happy. 
But Jesus didn't teach Nicodemus about how to get this power. He didn't want to teach Jesus skills. But rather Jesus shouted him by saying, Nicodemus, I tell you the truth. Unless a mere person is born again, he or she cannot see the kingdom of God. See means know by experience. When a baby is born, what does baby does first? Cry! <laughs> That's pray actually. After that, baby sees, maybe in two or three days. Yeah. Sees. We know that 90% of all sense data come to us through seeing. So seeing is very important. And Jesus says, Nicodemus, you won't have this power from me. But you are not even born again. You are not even a baby. You want to be a superman with power, but you are not even a baby. You do not see the kingdom of God. So how can you be powerful? Many people are very powerless. They are easily overcome by depression, easily overcome by worry. All like that because they do not see the kingdom of God actually. Yeah. King David says in Psalm 113, verse 19, The Lord has established throne in heaven. His kingdom rules over the all. Wow, King David saw that. Even though he was king, he was, he, even though he was ruling the Israel people, but actually he saw throne of God in heaven. God is ruling. He was just following God's ruling. So God could rule Israel people through him. When he saw the kingdom of God, rule of God, David became very powerful. There were so many enemies around him. Many times these foreign enemies invaded him, even in his own kingdom. Even his own son almost tried to kill him. There are always challenges, conflict. But David, King David could overcome all those things because he saw this throne of God. God rules the world. So if you look at Psalm 2, it's amazing. Yeah. King David says, Why do nations Try to harm God's anointed one in vain. Many enemies try to topple David, but God laughs at them. David laughed at them. He was not shaken. David saw God is shattering them <laughs> with the iron bar, like shattering pottery, the iron bar. Boom! <laughs> this. It's amazing. Yeah. That's what he saw. Very powerful. Jesus could be so powerful because he saw the kingdom of God. We remember when Jesus was trying to heal his people. Many enemies tried to kill him and his disciples are afraid. Lord, don't go there. They'll try to kill you. <laughs> Jesus says, I'm walking the light. Nobody can take anything. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. So, we should not just try to get something, partial thing from Jesus. That's the difference. People in the world just try to get something, just partial thing. But God's people need to listen to Jesus' word. I tell you the truth, unless 
a man, a person is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. You need to be born again first. Your eyes need to be opened. Spiritual eyes may open. You see the kingdom of God and then you will have a living hope through Jesus' resurrection and you will see wonderful inheritance in heaven. Wow! Then we are most rich in our heart and we become rich toward God and we can be generous to others. We can overcome all things. We see God provides us with all things. We become very powerful. Yes. It's amazing. And also, as our this, uh, elders read today, first uh, Peter chapter 1, 3 and 4 says, Praise be to God, who has given us new birth into a living hope through Jesus' resurrection and into inheritance in heaven. Wow! Do you see? Do you have a living hope? A person who is born again has a living hope in heaven. Yes. Even if I die in this world, I don't lose anything. I gain everything and I will receive this heavenly inheritance. Hallelujah. That's really. So where those are born again, where do they have hope? Do they hope on this world? No, what they gain in this world are really that's not the great looks great, but actually, how many people, they gain those things later, they say, oh my God, when I die, I cannot even bring a dime with me. <laughs> the Spanish proverb says, on barrier cloth, there is no pocket. <laughs> yeah. When Alexander, Emperor Alexander, he got this great Empire, Greece, Persia, Egypt, all this great part. But when he died, he left the world. When I died, put me in a coffin, my arms raised. <laughs> oh, I, so the people may see he died, he didn't get anything. He didn't grab anything from this world. That's very, very telling. That's right. Yeah. Only those who are born again have real riches in heaven. They have living hope. It's, it's living hope because it cannot die. Yes. Do you have this living hope? Are your eyes fixed on this heavenly nature? Or our eyes, our hope is set on the things of the world, the perishable things. This is one of the really, really uh, big challenges for us because we are living in a consumer's generation. Everybody wants to buy by shopping generation, consuming, and the people just, it's easy for people to think that all I need is money. Money can buy almost everything. No, money cannot buy eternal life. Money cannot buy living hope. Money cannot buy happiness. Money, can, money cannot buy heavenly nature. Not much. We need money, of course. We need to rule over money. We need to learn how to generate money, win money, be a good worker. We use money for God, money for people, money for our family. We need to rule over money. We should be master of money. But we should know that that's not our hope. It's amazing. Nicodemus was shocked and Jesus said, you must be born again. 
<laughs> Nicodemus is just uh, shocked by Jesus. Almost, he's almost having heart attack. Born again, I never heard about it. <laughs> That's right. The term being born again, it appears in the old New Testament. Apostle Peter talks about born again, new birth. Apostle John talks about all this. Apostle Paul, all this. Yeah. So, Nicodemus was shocked and he denied Jesus' teaching. How can I be born again? Jesus, what you're saying is real, doesn't make sense. I'm an old man. My mother is almost ready to die. How can I enter a womb again and be born again? Oh my God. Nicodemus doesn't have a spiritual understanding. This tells us the spiritual condition of religious leaders of Jesus' time. They only understood the word of God legally, physically, and they didn't know the spiritual working, working of the Holy Spirit. That's really surprising because when you look at I mean, Psalm 51, which we read today, King David talks about the Holy Spirit. Yeah. When he sinned, he repented before God with tears and said, Please create in me a contrite, broken, and contrite heart. Do not take away Holy Spirit from me. Holy Spirit, create broken and contrite heart. Purify. Yes. But in the time of Nicodemus, they didn't understand the work of the Holy Spirit and being born again. Being born again is a radical change from this world into heaven, God's world, kingdom. So Jesus explained, don't you know? You are a citizen, don't you know? And Jesus explained, a man, a person should be spiritually born, being born again, spiritually born. A flesh gives birth to flesh. A mother gives birth to a baby. And the Holy Spirit, the Spirit, gives new birth to our spirit. Yeah. Holy Spirit comes to us through our spirit and open our spiritual eyes to see. Wow, it's beautiful. Universe, God is taking care of. Oh, yeah, that's why we see this. That's why we are not frightened nowadays. Look at that. We saw this. Uh, this world is now getting worse and worse. And uh, just uh, new fighting, new threat. It's getting worse. Especially since 911. But we are not frightened because God rules the world and Jesus is coming again. Meantime, God wants us to live like Joseph in Old the Testament. God showed us the tribulation is coming, but we should do our best. Really, feed people with the word of God so that many people may be saved, except God and be saved, harvested. And so, God may give more chance to people, so we are not afraid. We know God is ruling, and instead of being sucked into the world, we pray to God, we do God's work daily. Taking care of God's people, serving God, and yes. And uh, look at this here. Nicodemus did never spiritual understand, and Jesus says, you must be born again. 
through word and Holy Spirit. Spirit. Yeah. This word, uh, according to uh, Apostle Paul in Ephesians chapter 5, 27, is cleansing us with word through the word of God. That's what Apostle Paul says. This word means purification, cleansing. Of course, that includes repentance. And especially through the word of God, we are cleansed. Jesus says in John chapter 15, 2 and 3, when we receive the word of God, word of God cuts our sinful desires, unfruitful desires, cleanses us, purifies us, prunes us. Word of God cleanses us. And the apostle Peter says, 1 Peter chapter 1, 23, you are not born again through perishable things, but through eternal enduring word of God. Through word of God. Okay. Of course, word of baptism can be helpful. I mean, repentance is needed, but word of God cleanses us. And amazing, Jesus says also in John chapter 6, 64 and 65, flesh counts nothing. The word Spirit gives life. Spirit gives life and flesh counts for nothing. The word I have spoken to you are spirit and they are life. When you receive Jesus' word, they are spirit. Spirit of power, spirit of joy, spirit of hope. When you receive Jesus' word, we become hopeful. It's amazing. When the spirit of hope comes, we are not timid, but we become very courageous. Because the spirit of power comes. Self-control. Spirit of self-control comes. When you receive Jesus' word. Wow. And Holy Spirit encompasses all. And Holy Spirit comes and give new birth to our spirit. Have you ever seen how babies born? Have you ever seen it? Do you think when you're born, were you born with your power? I'm going to go out to the world. Uh, push, push, push. And did you come out that way? No, actually, no. Actually, Muscle power of mother, mother soon, that pushes. Of course, gravitation helps you too. So, baby, head is down. <laughs> yeah, if baby's legs comes up, cannot come out, so it needs to be reversed. Head down, so gravitation pulls out. But most of power comes from mother's this power. <laughs> baby. Loving baby, lovely baby, go out into the world, wonderful world. Boom. 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 That, that's how it comes. When we receive the word of God, Spirit of God comes. Holy Spirit gives us power. Okay. Be born into the wonderful. Kingdom of God. Yeah, wonderful kingdom of God. You'll see most beautiful eternal heaven, most loving God, you know, wonderful inheritance. You do not die. That's really it. And the Holy Spirit gives power and we are born. We do not see everything really well. We see gradually better. Also, I want to remind you, when we are born again, we are born into new world of God's kingdom. 
It's wonderful. But we need to grow from that time. There's a beginning. Maybe. I've seen some people say, I'm a born again Christian. And I'm all done. No, from the time of being born again, we need to drink milk or spiritual milk. We need to be nourished. We need to grow. And we also need to be disciplined. We know that through the word of God, baby doesn't, as soon as a baby is born, baby doesn't fly in the, no. We know what baby does. They grow. And they are disciplined, grow. So, yes. But being born again is really landmark. One's life. Our life before new birth, after new birth. That's how our life is changed. Yes. So those who are born again, they grow in God's kingdom and full of living hope, really serving God. Even though we live in this world, we are not of this world. That's what Apostle Paul says. We take care of all, all things of the world, but we don't belong to it. Yeah, we belong to heaven. Amen. Yeah. Our body become older like that, but our spiritual bodies always young, beautiful, never perishing. Yes. Our body wears like an old house, but when this old house is gone, we have Mansion in heaven. Yeah. So may God bless you. We are citizens in God's kingdom. May God bless you to be full of joy because of this born again new birth. And please pray for many people who are not born again. Please pray. Let us pray for them so that they may be born. Yeah. We are spiritual nurses, spiritual doctors. And uh, that's how it's up. Pray for them, really. Yeah. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we are so thankful to you for our Lord Jesus, who really, our Lord, teaches us wonderful things. Our Lord, our Father, in your beautiful world of heaven, your kingdom, you have brought us we are grateful to you. Through your blood on the cross, we are born. When a baby is born, mother bleed. Then Jesus bled on the cross. We are born when you are raised, O oh God. O oh Lord, our Father, help us so that we may really pray for those who are not born again. Because those who are not born again are like eggs which are not fertilized. That eggs never become chicks. They are not hatched. As time passes, they become rotten. O oh Lord our Father, how many people are like unfertilized eggs because they are not born again? Have a mercy on me so that we may have real compassion for them. Pray for them. Share the word of God with them. Pray that Holy Spirit may come to them and give a new birth to their spirit. Thank you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, okay, thank God. Let us sing him, You Must Be Born Again. This is in our uh, printed copy. Yes.
There is no hell, but that's not true. Yeah. If people are not in heaven, if they have not really do not have heaven, then it's great suffering. Yeah. Suffering like hell. So some people say, oh, you don't need to be, I and mean, even if you are not 
born again, even if you do not have salvation during this lifetime, you, know, you may have uh, become uh, some frog next time. And some people, you still have hope. Why wait like that? Do you want to live as a frog and uh, eaten by a hawk? No. During this lifetime, we need to be born again and receive the kingdom of God. Why wait? <laughs> and so, let's really pray. We are very important. So we pray. Really. This is, yeah, the spiritual well-being. We pray for them. So, please pray. Our, okay, uh, um, according to the decision of our General Assembly, we'll have a, a New Covenant Holy Communion once in two months, first week. So, next uh, Holy Communion is March 5th. Okay. Yes. Also, please pray for 13th Jesus Culture Festival. It's March 12th Sunday, 19th Sunday. Yes, the, it's a wonderful Christian calligrapher in Korea wrote this and sent it to us. And so we are so grateful. We wanted to really give some gifts or like, but he said, no, 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 no. Why I just give it to you for your. So uh, please pray that God may raise up many uh, Christian musicians, artists, poets, or performers, many, so that uh, this winter time we may create wonderful things in praise of God, beautiful, wonderful things, and then present them and uh, really have uh, this uh, uh, Jesus Culture Festival, please pray. And uh, please pray for all our church people. Oh, I ask you to pray that God may help Pastor Manuel and his church people to complete uh, their building construction. Baka Valley, Flint Church building. That's our first, I mean, that's really, and in the most prosperous nation. Now, yeah, India is the most uh, populous, populous nation, greatest population, and biggest democracy. And our first church building is being constructed. Please pray. I mean, they are doing really well. The, I mean, they are, so please pray. That I believe also they have a lot of in need. Let's pray for them. And uh, okay, yes. Uh, please uh, uh, pray for also this uh, uh, Pastor Nicholas in Kenya. He will go to Lagos, Nigeria to attend some many convention among African Christian leaders. Please pray that God may help him to really have vision to hold the uh, uh, International Free Church Conference in Kenya in three to four years. Next year, we'll have East European Healing Convention. And uh, yes, Professor Sajan came already visited France and she did many wonderful things with others. I really believe God is leading us also. Many people uh, have been inviting me to meet Korea and uh, share and have some uh, our overseas uh, Shalom, internet Shalom game will be in Bukhansan Mountain National Park. So, yeah. so God is doing wonderful things. Also, okay, today, yeah, today, actually, I, I'm sorry that I didn't uh, give you prior information, but today and March 5th, March 6th, Purim is March 6th, 
sometimes this Purim and uh, this Borum, Deborum, are overlap, but this is one month difference. Uh, in our church, I hope that if it's agreeable to you, we may do, do this Sunday, we may especially pray for those who suffer from many uh, unclean spirit or spirit of despair or depression or injurious spirit in the Bible, hateful and uh, violent or unclean spirit, uh, many kinds of addiction. We may pray for, really pray for those who suffer from many types of unclean, evil spirit or depression or those things. So in order to kind of uh, uh, do it in a more kind of a uh, visual way, and uh, uh, we hope that we can crack pistachio nut or, or walnut or something. And uh, while praying for this, so people suffer, we crack them and, uh, in the name of Jesus, uh, evil spirit, get out of this person. And like that. And uh, on uh, Purim's Day, uh, on Purim's Day, uh, uh, many Jewish people break bread. <laughs> and, uh, but on our church, we hope that there are many people who suffer from evil spirit and uh, many also international, all these things. So we may really some break some pottery, old pottery, <laughs> with iron bars. I'm praying that those things can be just, we may pray for this, really breaking the power of the evil in the world. I mean that we, our church, really are concerned with many people who are suffering from all these things. So, uh, we we'll prepared some pistachio nut, walnut, what else? What nut out of nut? Mary? No, no, no. Peanut. Peanut, <laughs> okay. Sure. Break it in. Yeah. And uh, so if you know anybody who is suffering from any kind of uh, injury spirit, spirit of despair or evil spirit, unclean spirit like that, we may stay remember them and pray for them. Okay. Okay, let us sing him here, uh, and we may sing here. The four forty-nine. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. It's only one verse, and then benediction. Let us praise our God who gives us new birth into living hope and into heavenly inheritance. Amen. 49. Yes. Praise our God.
You love us so much. Our Father, your love endures forever. Please bless your people. Now, grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God our Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you, giving you great joy, hope, and heavenly natives. Amen.